What's happening, La Familia? How y'all doing, man? Happy New Year. It is officially 2023. Each and every one of y'all, man, y'all made it, man. Y'all made it, man. We still here. Thank the most high, man. And let me add, man, I think this year will be the year, man, we see something very, very special, man. So keep your eyes open and don't miss a moment. But I seen that interview, man, yesterday from uh, Tech and Real Tune TV. And might I say, man, uh, this was one of the best interviews I've seen in some years. Simply because uh, I felt as though Tech kept everything very, very transparent. Just listening, man, I felt like, you know, he gave his true feelings on NBA Youngboy, Fredo Bang, and TG Commas, the unity that was brought to Baton Rouge, and also, you know, just how he felt this whole ordeal initially started. He felt like it started because of the clout and attention that was given to Baton Rouge by, say, Cheese, you know, eight years ago, when everybody was racing to the top. And even though they were all cool at the time, man, everybody was, you know, using that crab in the bucket mentality, trying to tear each other down and trying to be the top dog, the first one out. Now, fast forward years later, the positions are set in stone. NBA young boy being the front runner, being the face, and everyone else's position is solidified. You know, they fell where they fell, but success still came to everybody. So it was nothing to ever, you know, really be fueling with each other about. And I feel like Tech is realizing that he's starting to grow wiser. He's getting older. He even mentioned that in his interview, you know, he's getting older. He's getting wiser. He squashed issues with Young Thug. He knew Gunna was a rat from the gate. And, you know, he just, uh, he really don't care about nobody else. He don't care to talk down on nobody else's career. He gonna do him. But like he said, you know, with all the unity, man, there still comes naysayers. And you got two types of naysayers. And like Tech explained in this interview, you know, all of their mentalities, as far as the rap community was, I'm gonna tear that dude down because I know some dirt on him and he ain't raw to me. Well, you know, that attention, that clout, that hunger for that clout, you got those type of naysayers still who feel like, I'm gonna do this because the fans wanna see us have this bloodshed. This is gonna pull me more attention as long as I'm still banging. And then you also got those flip naysayers who have been in the field, really active, feet really stamped in the soil, really, you know, wetting people up, you know what I'm saying? And they just, they, they, they don't feel like they can be cool with the opposition because they've been busting back and forth, you know what I'm saying? So like uh, on, on the cool, it's just one of those things, man, where dudes gotta lose that Stockholm syndrome mentality. And what I mean by that is dudes are not ready for change, man. They are not ready to embrace the change because of the what ifs. So they rather stick to what they know, which is the danger. But either way, man, it, uh, your what ifs making you feel like this could be a dangerous situation. But, you know, even if you don't stick to it, you're going to be stuck in a dangerous situation, man. So the best thing to do is embrace the change. Ain't nothing sucker about it. Embrace the change. Change is the only constant in this world change is always occurring since the beginning of humanity you know but what's going on right now in this world the energies the frequencies all the changes that are going on we are changing drastically not on, only internally but externally we are changing so rapidly that you know we can't even really document it but one thing we do know is that 2020 was the beginning of something new you know that was a transition 2021, getting your feet in the soil. 2022 was the end. Now, 2023 is the new age. So what is going to occur this year, you're going to see a great shedding off. If you are not ready to embrace the change, you are going to be disposed of. I'm just telling y'all, don't get caught left behind. But one of those people who vowed to never change was P. Youngin.
JP I miss you, baby. Life been eating me up without key. It's good, though. This stuff ain't over. I swear. F all the other stuff. I got souls to capture. Hashtag. Can't stop the violence. Let me tell you about my best friend. He's a warm-hearted person. You love me till the end. I hope I get killed on Trent. I wish I could do it myself, but I don't got the strength to do it. So I just hope somebody else do it for me. Wow. That's how you feeling, P. Youngin? Be careful of what you wish for, man. You know, you got to be careful of what you put out there into the universe. At the very end of the day, we are, you know, lesser. We're lesser guys, man. We lesser versions of our father. When he spoke and said, let there be light, he spoke with power, spoke that into the universe and it happened. So whatever you speak out of your mouth, you better know that it will come to fruition. That is the law of this universe. That is the way the universal God created it, the most high God. Understand that, man. The things that you let spill off your tongue <laughs> vibrate with so much authority, we just can't see it. We can't see those little vibrations. And that's why I talk about the stuff that happens on the smallest of scales. But see, you need to understand, P. Youngin, tragedy is going to occur. Pain is going to happen. The only thing that is absolute for each and every living human being is death. That is going to happen. There's people that love you. So whenever you Put yourself in a position to die. What you are doing is making the ones who love you feel exactly the same way that you do. But what makes them stronger is how they go about it. See, it's not about the pain that makes you, you know, a weak person. What makes you a weak person is taking that pain and living in it. What makes you a strong person is what you do in spite of that pain. How do you get back up? What steps do you take to grow? You feel me? You still out here hollering, can't stop the violence. Going against the grain of a man who gave you an opportunity and changed your life. This man tried to change your life. Like I said before, man, you know, we men, so we're not really, you know, prone, like in our DNA, we're not prone to want to follow behind another man and listen to his authority. Even the yes men in their heart of hearts, they don't want to follow behind no one else. Of course not. We are leaders. But in this instance, you are not following behind another man. What you are doing is showing your allegiance to the cause that you originally pledged your allegiance towards. You said you still 4K trait. Ain't nothing going to change with that. It's still green flags. Well, whatever you signed up for on day one, when you signed that contract with NBA Youngboy, you didn't know what was to come. But whatever came with that, you accepted that. Now you have to stand on that. This man wants to go a different way. Now you need to stand beside him. He made you a face of the brand. So represent that with respect and what the leader, the general, the boss, what he wants to do, you need to go that route. And that's just what it is, bro. You're making yourself look bad. That's all I'm saying. Y'all let me know how y'all feel about this, man. And you better stop all that, you know, I'm ready to take my life stuff, bro. That's immature. Grow up. Get yourself together. But Rico Taliban, man, he also uh, shared a little picture, man, uh, calling Boston Richie a rat. As we all know, it just got exposed that Boston Richie put a man behind jail and took the stand a couple times or whatever, man. But uh, y'all let me know how y'all feel about all that. But next up, man, we got that man Quando Rondo. As it seems, he's feuding with a broad on his Instagram and says, you post the wrong person. That's your 
not mine. And then, you know, takes to his Instagram to put up this video, you know, directing it at whatever broad, you know, he was just dealing with. But I don't give a about that bitch. Straight up, once you do some ops, boy, you. That ain't my bitch. Buddy, you over there posting her and shit, which I don't give a about none of that shit. I'm about to show y'all how y'all pipe it up like y'all tripping. Then last but not least, man, just to get us fully caught up, man, we got this incident right here, man, with Ben 10, man, where Ben 10 was crying, posted a picture of him crying tears on Instagram, man. And I wanted to see what else transpired from this. Not too much came out, but he said in the caption, this for all the real ones in the field, hold your head high, your life real, your tears real. Just trying to give motivation. And then he also says, everybody saying this person or that person wouldn't post them crying. They show you half they like or nine tenths. They wouldn't close to the ones they lost and just in front for music. For y'all with the cat, A can feel them. I ain't them. I'm 10. Then it says, keep your eyes open. And you know, I feel like what 10 was doing right there was trying to allow the people to know, like, you know, we going through real pain out here. You know what I'm saying? So if anybody feel me, then you feel me. I want y'all to see what I go through on the inside every day. This is how I feel like tears, you know, like crying. And this is how most people feel, but they try to act like they don't feel like this. Whenever you are in the streets and you are losing real people that you love, mentally, you're starting to break down. And that's what you're seeing from Ben 10. He's mentally and emotionally starting to break down from all of the tragedy. It's traumatizing, you know what I'm saying? I think the same thing is going on with Pete Youngin, but you know, they just don't know how to express themselves in a way, you know, for the people to understand what they are going through. You feel me? And that happens to a lot of us on the cool when we're young, man. That's why we got to educate ourselves. Now, I do want to say this, man. I was watching something the other day, man, and it was powerful. I wanted to share this with y'all, you know, and I can't remember exactly what I was watching, but it was a black man. He, he runs like a podcast, a show on here on YouTube. And uh, he spoke about how you know, a lot of these rich white men and not to sound racist or anything. I'm just saying a lot of those rich white men are racist. They look at us like scum. They look at their own people like scum. But what he was saying was, you know, a lot of them want to take pictures with highly successful black people because, you know, that gives them a sense of acceptance within the black community. At the very end of the day, the black community is the biggest consumer. So as long as you have them in your back pocket, you will be successful. So they try to take pictures with us, you know, to seem like they are a part of the culture to be accepted. So pretty much overall what it was, which, you know, stop giving away your leverage as a black person, male or female for free. Kanye West taking pictures with Donald Trump that gave him social acceptance within the black community. Stop doing that. Gain something, gain an advantage because they are getting one by taking that picture with you. You know what I'm saying? That picture with Kanye is kind of what won his presidency, was it not? So we got to understand what is being what is being played here, this game. Black people have the highest amount of energy out of any other culture. You know, energy has the ability to dominate other energy. If you are a high energy being, a high frequency being, Everybody else in the room, man, who's sitting at low frequency, when you come in there, you're going to raise their frequency. They want to siphon your energy, man. So stop allowing people to siphon your energy by, you know, being able to be close to you, by being able to portray an image to the world that they have a certain relationship with you, making them look hip, making them look cool to the culture. That's vitally important, man, because our people, man, they associate with what reflects them. Even if, you know, we got a Willie Lynch mentality, we still identify with what reflects us, man. So if it's one of our people rocking with someone else from a different ethnicity, then we're going to accept that person just because we see one of our people with them. We got to stop selling away our leverage for nothing. You know, and that's just something I wanted to pass on from that gentleman that was on that channel, man, I'm gonna figure out his name and put it here, man, but 
that was all facts. I'm going to try to find a snippet of that video, something y'all need to see, and it was very, very powerful.